Hi, Sam and Lily here, and this week we have the first ever Wellness That Works live podcast. So back in October, we held our Tea Time Live event in association with WW Ambassador Candice Brathwaite, and on the panel we were joined by Alison Hammond and Curtis Pritchard. It was a great panel where we discussed all things body positivity and the effect that can have on social media. So we think it's something a lot of our members will really resonate with. Yeah, it was a really inspiring chat. The audience loved it, and we hope you do too. Hi guys, my name is Candy Sprathwaite and welcome to Tea Time, backed by the incredible WW. Many of you may not know me, some of you may be here for him, her or a combination of the two. <laughs> but basically... They're here for the threesome! <laughs> <laughs> they want us all babes, it's a group activity. Honestly, I promise we went through this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh my god, I'm not presenting. <laughs> Um, a few years ago, about three, four years ago, I developed a talk show on Instagram stories and it was called Tea Time and I had daily topics and a daily show that run for about five minutes per show. Then in 2017, I did my first live, oh my God, the drama. I was seven <laughs> months pregnant. It was in like a little dingy basement in Crystal Palace. My man was like dragging suitcases up the hill full of goodie bags. So when I came today and saw my name on the goodie bags, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I've stepped up, but I couldn't have done it without the fabulous guys at WW who have backed me 110%, and these two said yes immediately, and I just wanted to give you some background and let you know that you should feel really comfortable here, and I don't want to cry because I just put my lashes on, but this is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. Are you a bit of mosh, babe? Babe, babe. <laughs> It's just a lot of moment. It is. Yeah. And to be with you, especially Alison, who I've watched on TV and grown up watching and admiring, I'm like, oh God, here she goes. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. And it's going to be a really interesting conversation. So I'm going to kick it off with some data. Firstly, I would like to start with some data just to help us get a broader picture in regards to what British, British society think about wellness. More than one in six Brits admit they don't feel knowledgeable about a healthy and balanced diet for their lifestyle. And 16% of Brits admit to always feeling tired and never doing any exercise out of their everyday routine. Now, with that said, what triggered you both to join WW and help improve your well-being? Well, to be honest with you, I actually went to WW off my own back. I saw a friend who I hadn't seen for ages, a guy friend who's a male who was going to WW. And he just looked amazing. It wasn't the fact that he'd lost weight. It was just like his eyes were different. There was just something about him that had changed. His whole attitude, his whole... He was happy. All I saw in him was happiness. And I was like, babes, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm going to WW. You should come along. I was like, yeah, what, what is WW? What's this WW? He was like, Weight Watchers. I was like, Weight Watchers. You're going to Weight Watchers. Weight Watchers. I was like, all right, then I'll come along. So the next week, I just decided to go along. And then literally, the whole class was like... <coughs> <laughs> like it's Alice and Hammond, like literally, like the, the the room was just erupted that I was in the the room. So obviously, news travelled that I was doing uh, Weight Watchers, and I started doing it, and I was really enjoying it. And then WW came to me and said, "Would you like to be an ambassador?" I was like, "Have you got it right, babes? I'm like the worst at any sort of." Um, like well-being program i don't stick to things i'm like would be the worst ambassador like, no alison you are you'd be amazing you'd be your journey would be really interesting i was like oh well, actually that's quite quite amazing so it was kind of like a no-brainer i was doing something that i should be doing anyway and i just i wanted to to kind of represent everyone it's a bit of a brave thing to do yes but um because like you you literally on show so and people are like looking up to you that, and they really want you to do well. And I feel that people really want me to do well, but that's the reason why I did it. Okay, Curtis. So mine is, a, I just wanted a healthy relationship with food, really. Um, I've always been a, sort of in the eye of uh, people because my dancing and everything I've done in competitions, this and that. So I've always, um, and I've always liked food. I've been a big foodie, everyone loves food. And what I'd basically do is I'd do these crash course diets. And I'd just, I'd lose a serious amount of weight in a, in a short period of time, like uh, two, two months I could lose four stone, like one month I'd lose two stone, like I'm literally just eating nothing and doing a load of exercise. And mentally, physically, everything is just not good for me. And then I'd all of a sudden binge for about two weeks. And I mean, I'd be eating like 7,000 calories a day. 
and I'd just put all of the weight and more back on. And then I'd also be trying to do some little diets and I'd be like, if I eat a Mars bar really quick and no one sees me, it doesn't count. You know what I mean? Like, the quicker you eat it, the less calories it is. It's, yeah. I, I figured out that that wasn't the case after a while. So um, I wanted to just have a healthy relationship with food. I wanted to be able to have McDonald's if I needed it, ice cream if I want it, but then also mentally get myself a lot better as well with the food. So that's why I wanted to join the WW family and that's why I've joined them now and I'm, and I'm an ambassador. I've been doing it for two and a half weeks and um, I've lost about five pounds now and I just feel so much better. I'm not, having to, I'm not thinking about dieting, I'm not thinking about trying to lose weight, I'm thinking about living a healthier lifestyle and literally just doing me <laughs> and literally focusing on me and um, it, it's working, it's good, I feel good about myself and I'm eating massive meals, like constantly, I'm never going hungry whatsoever so um, I just feel better, I've got more energy dancing, more energy doing everything I'm doing and, um, and I'm losing weight slowly and that's sort of just an end product, I'm not doing it because I want to lose weight and get thin, I'm not doing it because I don't want to do a diet, I don't want to do any of that, I'm just doing it because I want to live a healthier lifestyle. If the end product is I look in better shape, I look in better shape, but I feel mentally better, and that's the main thing for me. So, yeah, that's uh, WW for me, really. Uh, I just had to lose weight after them two kids because, girl, <laughs> honestly, and I was doing WW before WW approached me, so it just felt like this natural yeah. fit. And I'm very public online about giving women and men the space to say, I want to change my body but we'll get more into body positivity later. Body shaming has affected almost half of the British nation. What, if any, has been your personal experience of being body shamed? Well, this was actually one of the reasons why I wanted to join WW as well, because obviously being in Love Island, uh, I was on show to the world. Uh, I did put two stone on in weight in there, you know? I used it as a holiday, ate a lot of cheesecake, what can I say? But um, I got fat shamed. And obviously in the villa, we don't know what's going on. So I didn't know any of this, didn't know what was going on at all. Uh, I come out of the villa and, and they say to us, um, all of the news articles, anything that's good about you, anything that's bad. And one of them was getting fat shamed. And that sort of hit me and I was like, wow, now, that's, um, we're in 2019. First of all, why is this even happening? You know, um, nobody should be fat shamed whatsoever because it's a horrible thing. I think we all agree with that. And um, and then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do anything for them. I'm not going to do anything for the people that are fat shame me or anything. I'm going to do this for me. And then eventually that will prove to them anyway. Like if I'm living a healthier lifestyle. So that's uh, one of the other reasons why I've joined WW really. So it does happen. And I don't feel it should happen, should it? It's this horrible thing. It's um, belittling and bullying people. I just, I just think, I personally feel more sorry for the people who are saying the fat shaming. Because I feel like they're kind of projecting really how they feel about yeah. themselves. So I feel sometimes, um, if anything, I feel sorry for people who, firstly, have the guts to even write it down and fat shame, because that's a, that's a big thing to, you can think something, you could see someone passing and think something, but I think it's a massive thing to then go home or go on your mobile phone and, and purposely, actually purposely yeah. write it down. It's a bit like uh, if you accidentally hit someone or you punch someone, it's like that punch to actually write it and send it and, and did that make them feel good about themselves or is the truth why you're so bothered about the fact that I take up a little bit extra space the fact that you don't want to be big yourself is, is that what the, the truth the underlying thing is so if anything I just feel more sorry for that person that they're not getting the help that they need that's per my personal yeah. view on it they're unhappy and then yeah, they're taken out I on do. yeah the first time I was fat shamed was um, when I was about 12 years old I actually um, was a really good swimmer to the point where I got into an Olympic team and my mum sent me to um, classes where I would train and, and work with like really good swimmers and I went along and I've always been a, a strong swimmer, really, really good and I got fat shamed on that day, someone said some nasty words about me and it was the first time I was aware of what I looked like and I told my mum, I said mum I don't want to go back anymore and it stopped me, I always think about that sliding door moment where, like, where my life would have been because I was a really good swimmer and I think in life when you do get shamed I think we go on a, a, a perpetual like cycle of um, thinking to themselves oh I've been shamed I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a 
I'm going to go on a fad diet. I'm going to lose the weight and then I'll go back swimming. And I think throughout my, my teens, I stopped going swimming. I didn't go, when I went on holiday, I never went swimming in the sea. My mum used to go, go on now, show, every, show everyone how good you are at swimming. I'm like, oh, nah, I don't want to. So I'd come up with these excuses that I didn't want to actually do it because I was so focused on how I looked. And I think a lot with, with this body shaming and things like that, we're so focused on how we look that we forget that our bodies are actually amazing and that we can do so much. The way I see it is, you know, see your body as like an instrument rather than an ornament because if, once you start seeing your, yourself as an instrument, it's at that point you think, do you know what? My body's amazing. You gave birth. I've given birth. I've climbed the Atlas Mountains. You know, I'm a strong woman. I did Strictly Come Dancing Curtis. <laughs> I, was, I was actually quite good. <laughs> Uh, do you know what I mean? It's like once you start seeing your, your body as an instrument and stop stop seeing it as a um, as an ornament or something to look at, it's at that point you can make that change to go. You know what? This is me. If you don't like it, you deal with it. But I'm all right with it, you know, because this body is kind of cool and I like it. I like the way it moves. I like the way. I, yes, it's a little bit. I take a little bit extra space. But do you know what? I can flip in dance. I'm really good in bed. <laughs> I was going to say, you can really dance until you said the back. I don't know about think, that part. In general, I just think you just need to see what your body can do in general and stop thinking it as, as something. Because we so, we so many times, we be, we, as women, you get objectified by what you look like. And we do it to each other. As women to women, we look at them and go, oh, look at that. Stop doing that and just think about what you can do in your own body and that's what I think is important. And that's the uh, same with men as well though, because obviously... Men's yeah. doing it now, like yeah. the, the Instagram, yeah. you see it. I see, I go to the gym, because I go to the gym as well, I pull lots of weights, I love doing weights. And I go to the gym, I see the men taking the six pack pictures and everything, and then I see them putting the phone down, I see sadness. Yeah. yeah. I see sadness in them, because they're not thinking, oh gosh, I could go and run a marathon. They're just going, oh, I've got to get that picture. I've got to get that picture on Instagram, I've got to get it right. And it's, a, it's that constant chatter that we give ourselves, don't we? You, oh, I've got to take my picture from up there because I'm a double chin. Oh, God, let me just adjust my top because I don't want people to see me. Oh, God, let me cover my arms because it's a constant chat and it's exhausting. It's exhausting for you. You need to stop that constant chat to yourself going, oh, my God, I need to do this. Oh, look at my chin. Oh, let me like do this a bit. Let's cover this up. It needs to kind of stop, really, because you, it's a, number one, it's, a, it's mental health problems. Yeah. And secondly... <clears throat> Do you know what? It's all right to just do you because everyone else is taken. Just do you. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm not over. <laughs> 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 Whoever I actually on, felt like I was Oprah then. <laughs> Whoever is on socials tonight, instrument, not ornament. I think that is like a quotable that oh my god, shivers. Now Curtis, babe, I've got to keep it real, yeah. I've never watched Love Island in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? Like, never. And WW, when they were like, yeah, Curtis, I was like, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, never watched it. But obviously, it's extremely popular, and of course, such popularity <clears throat> leads to a major discussion yes. on social media. Mm -hmm. Has being under such intense public scrutiny affected your mental health? And if so, how have you been dealing with it? Um, me, it hasn't, no. But um, I can completely understand how it can and why. The reason for me it hasn't is because I have such an incredible support network around me. Uh, my mum, my, my dad, my grand, my... Me. My, my, yeah, <laughs> you, absolutely. And, and my brother. So um, they are my big support network, which I'll always go to. But the amount of um, comments, negative comments, I've had on some of my posts and stuff, just um, the main reason I... How I deal with it is I try not to read them. Neither the positive comments as well, because there's no need. You are who you are, and you should be happy with who you are. Accept everything you are. You know, tall, small, wider, thinner. It makes no difference. Accept who you are, and then you can be happy in yourself, and then you can progress into whatever you want to, which if it is weight loss, it's weight loss. If it's to get that job, it's to get that job. But you'll never, ever achieve it 100%, or be able to throw yourself 100% in, unless you can accept yourself and be true to yourself, and that's how I deal with any comment that anyone gives me. I take it on board, absolutely, but I uh, accept who I am and I appreciate everything I have got. Like, because a lot of people don't have a lot of things and we take stuff for granted these days, we do, in everything. And I just think to myself, look, these people are saying this, I, like you said earlier, I feel sorry for them because they're just keyboard warriors or they're clearly not 
accepting who they are and happy in themselves and they're having to take it out on somebody else to make them feel small. So just accept who you are and um, really try not to read the comments if you don't need to. Don't read the positive ones. Post a picture because you want to post a picture, not to please other people. Post it because you want to, because you feel good about it. So don't please other people and just do you. And that's how I deal with any negative or positive comments. I try not to read them at all and I'll only post pictures because I want to. I won't try and please other people because there's no need to. If anyone says anything negative about me, I literally stalk them off and find them. Yeah. <laughs> Follow them to the home. I'm only joking. There's any press here. Or there's that way. Yeah. <laughs> Either works. Yeah. Apparently, Brits are saying they spend an average of only one hour and ten minutes on social media every day. That is a lie. That, that, is, that, that is a lie. That will lie. But yeah. Alison, when you were on Big Brother, social media wasn't around. Do you think your post-exit experience would have been different if it was? Um, I don't because, um, like you, Curtis, I do like my Instagram and Twitter for myself. I don't really do it for anybody else, if I'm honest with you. I like really enjoy looking at my own stories and like <laughs> making up a little story for the day. And some days I might go a week and I might not do it because I just literally do it as a hobby for myself. It's only like sometimes I'll be walking down the street and someone went, oh, did you lose your keys today? I'm like, oh, I'm not horrified. How do they know that they've lost my keys? And then I think, oh, I posted it on social media. So I think for me, I do use social media literally for myself. I have a right good laugh with it. Um, occasionally, I'm, I mean, I, I do see like negative comments and because they're quite, I know it sounds weird, but I don't get very many negative uh, comments so when you do see one it's like it sticks out like a sore thumb doesn't it and yeah. it's the one that you concentrate on all I would have had a million like lovely comments and then I'll have this one negative comment and I can't believe that that would uh, consume me for a whole day and I'm sorry to say that I, it has done because I'm like oh my god why do they hate me so much why am I so in love but really and truly if you was in the street and someone said something unkind, you'd literally walk on and just be like, oh, what a weirdo. And you just walk on and that's the sort of attitude you've got to have online. So I'm getting a bit more like you, Yeah. So when I do see it, I literally let it brush over me, feel sorry for them, move on. Yeah, and it is because no matter how many good things yeah. you do, it's always that one thing that everyone I don't remembers. Now. You yeah. know what the new thing is? I don't do a block, I do a follow. <laughs> It really, really upsets them. Like, I've had people going, why are you following me? I'm like, because I want to. Like, literally, I don't do a block. Actually, the best thing I've ever heard. Follow is the best. It's just, if someone hates your guts, follow them. Like, literally, it really winds up. They were, like, direct messaging me and go, can you stop following me? I was like, no. no. And, then I, and then I get blocked. <laughs> I like to do a little follow oh. now. That's my thing. I follow all the haters. <laughs> oh my god. Do you both think oh Do you both think that people feel more entitled to comment on your appearance because of your public profile? Oh yeah. Hundred percent, yeah. And especially when you put yourself out there on WW as an ambassador. Um, you, you, you're all of a sudden you're not only the public you're, you're like everyone who's doing WW I'm, I'm part of their team now so they want to know everything I mean the number one question for me is how much weight have you lost Alison how much weight have you lost and obviously I'm a little bit secretive because I put on three pounds this week and so <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit secretive so I don't like to tell everyone everything do you know what I mean because I'm up and down you know what I'm like I, I maintain and stuff like that and uh, so that number one, they, they just want to know how much I've lost, how much I've lost. So yeah, they, they do feel like they own you in, in some sense. And I suppose in a way you kind of, if you, if you want to say, I, I kind of am theirs a little bit and I don't mind being theirs. I, I, I actually quite enjoy it, but um, I, think so it's, I think it gets difficult when you want to kind of switch it off into your own personal life and some celebrities, they do kind of, they caught it and then they don't want to have it in their own life or they don't want to speak to people when they're on the train or on the, the bus and stuff like that. Me, I'll talk to anyone all day long. I don't mind it. That's exactly the same as me. Yeah. Like anyone that comes up to me, I'll have a conversation with you. I'll turn up late to work all the time because I've had a conversation with someone. It's the worst thing ever. But yeah. it's, it's the best thing though yeah, as well. Yeah, but I'm my natural resting face, like when I'm out and about, is actually lo looks quite bitchy. <laughs> so my natural face when I'm rushing for trains is this. <laughs> 
so not many people actually oh, the, uh, approach me. I don't know why they <laughs> feel like... Because I do actually look quite moody. I know because I'm smiling all the time. But when I'm like just concentrating on getting a train and stuff, I do look like a bitch. But I genuinely am not. So do feel free to come <laughs> say hi. I will not bite your head off. <laughs> Four in ten people describe themselves as, as body positive. Ugh. Oh. Do you not oh. like that word? Oh, I just think it's really loaded. And when you say, especially as a woman, not taking anything away from the men, but especially as a woman, when you say, I want to lose weight, or I want the body I had three, four years ago, oh my God, you're supposed to be body positive. Like, we're not doing that. Body positivity. <laughs> and I'm just like, black like is there not a way to want to change and remain body positive so I'm a bit like mm. do you think that term is a help or hindrance when it comes to maintaining not just a healthy body but more importantly a positive mindset I think it's a bit of both <clears throat> really because I think um you need to obviously just be confident in who you are and stuff but like like you've just said you're meant to be body positive so hang on but you want to lose weight now and that's what everyone comes at but I, I, I think that's where it's the bad part because yeah being body positive just means you're, you're happy with yourself I always try to be mentally positive because then I'm going to be po body positive anyway and then I can reach another goal but if you're always trying to reach something before being mentally and body positive then you're never going to reach another goal so like if I'm fully body positive now like I feel like I am I can now focus on eating healthy where my weight will drop naturally anyway or, or, or on something else. So it's a bit of a, it's a fine line because I think mentally as well you need to be positive because you could be perhaps body positive but then mentally you aren't 100% positive so it's a bit of a fine line for me. Yeah, I think it's just like about, for me, it's about finding your power, isn't it? Yeah. Your power and knowing that, yes, if you might not be in the, the place that you want to be, but mentally, like literally, I'm not going to lie, I'm an athlete in my head. I am there in my head, I look like Maura, I'm telling you. <laughs> in my head, I am size 10, I'm not going to lie. I am in my head size 10, because I'm there, and I think... When <laughs> <laughs> Like, you might laugh about that, but I think once you're there mentally, then the rest will follow. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So don't, just watch this space. <laughs> <laughs> because I will get to my target, which is, I would like to be about, like, about size 16 to 18. That's what yeah. I would, because at the moment I'm size 22, 24. So I w I w I'm going to get there. I want to, yeah, it's just, you know, mentally I'm there. But not my, physically I'm not there yet. Do you know what I mean? Kirsty, we'll do some more dancing. She is an incredible dancer, today, I'm not going to lie. I'm telling you, it's like a moment. It makes you so happy. And do you know what? It's actually enlightened how much I love to dance. And sometimes, like, when you get shamed and stuff like that, it stops you from doing amazing things, doesn't it? Like, it can, it can literally change the course of your life. By, by listening to shit and listening to what people tell you and, and you then being what they've told you. You become like your own, is it your own self-fulfilling yeah, prophecy? Absolutely. You've got to, you know, just do what you want to do. Like, I love to dance and I, yeah. you know do I can dance. Do what makes you happy, I yeah. can dance, can't You I have babes? rhythm. Like, you felt it, I'm you? not even going <laughs> to... I've I seen felt that it. you I felt it. <laughs> We were connected. <laughs> we recorded it, so don't worry. You'll see it online. You'll see me and him. Our bodies, like... As one. Got it down. Yeah. <laughs> can we do it again one time? Even if it's just, like, once every six months? Uh, we can, like, we can, dance. We can, oh, you don't yeah, want to We do can bring do. that down earlier. I'm thinking we can do this more often, yeah. I know you're busy at the again. moment. <laughs> 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 can make this a weekend thing. <laughs> I feel like this is oh the let's go dating. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I'd love to do that show. I think I'd be amazing on that. I'd love to meet the man of my dreams. Oh. If there's anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> Only 25% of people, oh my God, believe that bodies can be healthy at any size. Do you think more work needs to be done to combat the falsehood that a bigger body equals a less healthy body? Oh, God, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because ultimately, um, 
you know, diabetes does kick in when your pancreas doesn't work properly. And if you're bigger, you are going to have, it's a fact that maybe you are going to have certain issues if you continue a sedentary lifestyle and do nothing. But if you're um, a person like myself, who is, yes, I am big, probably prone to getting certain uh, high blood pressure, diabetes. I haven't got any of those, by the way. I've got a very low cholesterol. The only thing that's very high for me is my BMI. Everything else is perfect. But I'm very fit in my body. For instance, if you see me doing yoga, I can get into some serious, amazing <laughs> positions. Uh, I'm very good in weight training. I love my dancing. I love my walking and stuff like that. But ultimately, being bigger like myself, it is more difficult, say, to go running. Like, I can jog a little bit and my boobs literally go everywhere. <laughs> so that is a little bit difficult. So obviously, if I was a little bit smaller, I'd probably be able to run a little bit faster. And also, when you're a little bit bigger, you're more tendency to, like, lean. You won't run up the stairs all the time. You might just call out to the, babes, can you get me that, that towel and bring it downstairs? And, but when you're smaller, you naturally want to run up the stairs, run back down. Oh, I've forgotten something upstairs. So you run back upstairs and... If I forget something up the stairs, I'm like that. Oh, wait for half an hour. Let's have a, <laughs> let's have a drink, let's have some pancakes, <laughs> and then I'll go back upstairs. Do you know what I mean? As you, it's just a natural thing. The bigger you are, you are naturally going to be a little bit slower. You might lean on things a bit more often. You might want a, a box to put your feet on. But when you get smaller, because I have been smaller, everybody. I have been a little bit smaller, so I do know what I'm talking about. When you're smaller, you're just a bit more agile and you just you don't naturally know that you are moving a little bit more. I don't know what the question was, but what you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Am I going round about? But basically, I was saying... Do you think more work needs to be done yeah. for people to basically respect a bigger body and see it as healthy. Does yeah, the media I feel like you've always. Work? I feel like as a bigger person, you've always got to make excuses or like I've I've got to justify like why I'm big. Like I don't. I should be able to you just shouldn't like have to. I shouldn't have to justify and go. Oh, oh well, I do go to the gym or oh, I do eat healthily. I don't feel like. Uh, I feel like as a bigger person, you have to kind of just justify your space in the world rather than just being you, who you actually are, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I know I'm fit, I know how I feel in my body, I know how agile I feel. And I know, yes, the, the truth is, if I was smaller, I'd feel even better. I think I'd be a fucking machine. It's going, it's <laughs> obvious way, but I really would actually be a machine if I was smaller, it would be amazing. But I just think, uh, ultimately, I feel like you've got, you feel like you've got to justify who you are and why you're here, when really and truly, we shouldn't have to. Yeah. Curtis, what do you think? I pretty much, I think that we should, right, if you're bigger or if you're smaller, it makes no difference. It is who you are. And yeah, like you just said, you may find it a little bit harder to do some things if you are slightly larger. Or the fact that there are some medical things involved. But you could be super fit. You can be all of these things. And people, they just judge you. They say, lazy, Sorry. Yeah. lazy fat. That's yeah. what people say, basically. And uh, they shouldn't because that person, whoever it is, and however they are, they could be 10 times fitter than you just but because they have a, they're a little bit larger than you. It doesn't make any difference. You can still be a lot fitter, like you said. And there's different things. Instead of running, because you may find it hard to run, you can go on the bike. You can do different things. So you can still be just as fit. So people shouldn't be judging people on... It's judging a book by the cover, basically. You shouldn't be doing it, that old right, saying. To bring this back to WW as well, it's about being smarter, isn't it? It's being, it's being smarter, making smarter decisions. Like, for instance, I could eat exactly the same as how I ate before, but it's a bit smarter, so it's probably less calories. And, for instance, like cooking, I don't know, you might cook a pancake and then you might put olive oil to, to fry it with instead of, you know, your fry lives. It's just about, like, changing, like, mentally, making, like, healthier changes. I might change my pasta and put, like, I don't know, some aubergine, you know. Yes, that is, you know, yeah. do you know I, mean? I might just change things up a little. It's about being smarter as well and just... You don't really have to change who you are, like I like Chinese food, but you can seriously make those fake waves, which are just like brilliant. The taste is they're so, they're like even better. You're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And so like, it's just about being smarter, isn't it? With your, your decisions and stuff like that. And I'm guilty of judging people. I used to go running guys, honestly, I was great. I went to a <laughs> run club and one day this guy walks in and he's a lot bigger than everyone. And he goes right into the fastest group. And in my mind, I'm like, what, what are you doing? You know, when you, you know, we do it. 
he smoked the shit out of us. <laughs> <laughs> and we got back to the run club and my mouth was just on the floor and that really was the moment that I checked, like, do not judge a bigger body by its cover. We don't know what everyone is capable. We don't even know what we are capable of because we take on so much of other people's judgments. Not gonna go to the pool, belly rolls. Not gonna go dancing, don't like my... You cut off so much of the life you could be enjoying yeah. because you don't currently respect your instrument. Yes. And I think, I don't wanna be in my deathbed and be like, I didn't go samba dancing because of belly rolls. Yeah. Like, that's actually quite sad. And it's because of, you haven't done them things because of somebody else. Exactly. Because you've let somebody else rule your life. And, and that's also, what you need to know, yeah. To totally, and also, do you really think you're all that, that everyone's going to be watching you for that long? Do you really <laughs> think, do you really think you're that special? <laughs> that someone, when you go into the gym, Alison, that the whole gym is going to turn around and go, oh, look at Alison on the treadmill. <laughs> do you really think, Alison, that you're that special, that everyone wants to <laughs> check you out for that long? And literally, we're all human beings. We all have a look. Then we look away and we carry on with our with our lives and we do our own thing that's a fact we're all gonna look at each other so get used to that don't feel away if someone's looking at you let them look like the biggest thing look people always do it to me when i come and meet them they go down to my toes and work the way up and i absolutely love it i go like that and then when they then when they get to my eye i go what do you reckon <laughs> actually see it, they go like that, they start from the toes and they work the way up and when they get to my eye I go, what do you reckon? And then I, then I do one. In your personal opinion, I like what, what you <laughs> In your personal opinion, what do healthy behaviours look like? Hmm, it's a very good question. Healthy yeah. behaviours, I'd say, um, Forget about all of the exercise and everything. Um, something that I actually did that changed a massive part of me actually was <laughs> meditation. Um, don't, I'm not on about like an hour a day or anything like that. Just a quick 10 minutes, five minutes a day. And that actually brought my whole aspect of life just differently in myself. Like it just sort of like cleared my head up because we all, everybody thinks every day we have hundreds of thoughts in our head. Our heads are always clouded like, got to do this, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that and everything. And I just sort of started doing some meditation and um, it just cleared my head. So then I could actually focus on myself and I could love myself and therefore then I could do supposedly what my, ass, my idea of a healthy lifestyle is and just eat smarter choices. And that's why I wanted to join WW because I didn't want to cut out and I didn't want to stop doing things because that's not healthy. You can't have a McDonald's. You can't have that burger. You can't have that. That is not healthy. So then I was just like, do this, and then I can have all of them little things making smarter choices. So a healthy lifestyle for me is having everything, doing everything. So for example, sitting down doing nothing, going to the gym every once in a while, eating that McDonald's or eating that salad, it's doing everything. And that is my version of like a healthy diet, lifestyle, whatever you want to call it. Alison. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. And it's kind of the whole idea that everything's on the menu suddenly kind of makes you feel happier in the sense of oh gosh yeah. I'm not, I don't have to like I don't have to um worry about what I'm eating because I can have anything that I want if I want something on the menu and that opens up a world of oh gosh I don't have to binge or I don't have to have do liquid diets or anything like that because I used eat. to yeah I used yeah. to say like I can't have that and then all of a sudden I'd eat a load of that yeah. and it's like oh now I've eaten it all <laughs> yeah. I don't need it but it's kind of having that choice isn't it you can have that chocolate bar but you know, it's, it's knowing, well, if you have that chocolate bar, it's going to be that many points. So it's, you might adjust your day. And it's having that, that knowledge, that info to then go, do you know what? I want that chocolate bar, but do you know what? I'm not going to have that chocolate bar. You know what? I'm going to have a piece of fruit and I'm going to have this instead. And, you know, just change it up. It just gives you that. And you, and you know in your head it's always still there, isn't yeah, it? So exactly. it's not like it's taking it away. It's yeah, like it's still there, like I can't to, have yeah. it. Yeah. And it's control as well. When you're in control, a healthy lifestyle to me is when I feel in control, when my heart's singing, <laughs> my food's in control, um, I'm doing my exercise, I feel happy in myself, my heart is singing, you know, and you know, and it makes me happy for everybody else as well. Um, I notice my son's happier because I'm happier. And it's, you, you do really have to put your, yourself first really because if you're not right then everything else goes off kill really so for me um putting a healthy first. lifestyle yeah. is putting myself 
kind of first and yeah which I you know I'm still working on and you've got to remember like I've got like about 30 years of uh, bad eating patterns that I have to kind of get into check it's not going to happen overnight for me so I am still learning at 44 years old and I am still you know trying and and adjusting and trying to work things out myself really I completely agree with that I just want to add healthy a healthy behavior for me is therapy yeah and I don't think we talk about that enough because it's not until I went to therapy that I realized why I overate and that my dad sending me to bed with the whole pack of Bakewell tarts is not a good look like my no those you need to unpack those things and address those things and kind of like reverse engineer how you get to this point so it's always like a combination of everything and I don't think you can even begin to touch on maintaining that body you want or your version of a healthy body if you haven't dealt with what made you seek comfort in food or cigarettes or whatever it is in the first place so interesting you say that Candice because I mean you go to America and going to therapies like going to the doctors or yeah. just going to the shops or anything it's actually part of life all the children do it all the adults do it but we don't really do it here we don't really so it's actually a really good point yeah well so we, you know we like we section off there don't we Ther i go to therapy sometimes i think do it's the bad thing it's the best thing ever yeah because yeah, you learn you yeah. learn so yeah. much about yourself and others like but we as a race just we sort of section off it's like if you go to therapy you've got a problem yeah pretty yeah. much but that isn't but guess the case what? we all have problems and it's yeah and, ev and everyone <laughs> is unique in your own yeah. way and everyone's different so like problems to some people aren't problems to other yeah. people and that's uh, like i love therapy for them reasons finding out about myself and then hopefully one day i can relate to somebody else and and help them so yeah. yeah last question any advice for those wanting to change their lives for the better but they either don't know where to start or feel unsupported i would start with um writing down 150 it's quite difficult because when you get to 75 it's quite difficult I would start by writing 150 things down that you've always wanted to do and you want to achieve. And I'd write them down and I'd read them every single night and I'd go over it all the single time. All the time, I'd, I'd do that, first of all. All the things that you want in your life, I'd write it down. Can I just add one thing to that as well? Yeah. And I would do exactly the same thing with a list. Um, yeah. Write five things that are positive about yourself. Anything, um, have nice hair. Um, so if I just do it about myself, um, I've uh, got nice bracelets on. I, um, I'm, I'm, I've got a smiley personality. I like to talk to people. I, I love to check on everybody. I, I like to um, have a laugh and uh, I'm positive and uh, I'm emotional as well. Yeah. And then I'll say it to myself every morning. Every morning when I get up, I'll say it straight away. And it's just a way to start your day off in a positive manner and knowing that you do have good things about you. Because like you're saying, if you are in a down situation or a down time and you're trying to change your life around, you're gonna be waking up with negative thoughts. You're gonna be waking up feeling like shit. You're gonna be waking up hating life, not wanting to be here, not wanting to eat, not wanting to do whatever it is, or wanting to eat. And uh, you need to start it off with a positive note and realize that you in yourself, yeah. no matter when you are in life, you're amazing. You're, you're unique. You're, you're different than anybody else for the best reasons, not any bad reasons. So start it off, like you said, right? Yeah, well, stuff I, would, I, would, I would go on from that and say, I would see myself, I, what I try and do is see myself through the eyes of my son. I would look at myself and see myself through his eyes. I would, you know, and think about how does he see me? And I know he, he, you know, he's, he sees me as strong. I know he sees me as beautiful. I know he sees me as one of the most amazing women in his life. He tells me all the time. So it's about like seeing yourself through the eyes of a loved one and not only seeing it, but believing it. And I think if you, if you believe it, then, then it starts to resonate. But I was saying about the list, do a list. I do that, definitely do that list because that will help you. What, what was the question again? <laughs> I always do this. I think I'm getting Alzheimer's, you know. If people want to, <laughs> <laughs> if people want to change their lives for the better, what's yes. the advice? So yeah, I would definitely do that list. See yourselves through the eyes of your loved ones because that's going to be a nice thing. And gratitude. I would always, like at the end of the evening, like just say thank you. If you believe in God, say thank you to God. If you don't believe in God, you can thank the universe, whatever you want to thank. If you're spiritual, just thank, you know, just be grateful that you've got a roof over your head, that you've got food in your belly, that you've got lovely friends and family, that the loved ones that you love are still here. 
that you've met Curtis Pritchard from <laughs> Love Island. Just be grateful for everything that you that, that you have. That's what that are, and then that at that point it's going to ground you, isn't it? I I think. And if you want to ch change, I stop reading social media, like you said. Stop, stop the, turn your phone off. Stop worrying about other people's lives. Stop trying to yeah. be like somebody else. Social media is so bad because so you see all these influencers and, and they put on these amazing, gorgeous pictures that are completely edited and it's not even looks like that person. And then we all aspire to be like that. Wait, hang on, you can't be like that because that person's not even like that. Yeah. It's fake. Yeah. So uh, yeah, stop looking at all of that stuff and just focus on you, be you. And, and more connected you. than ever, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. And, and we're more lonely than ever. Yeah. Talk to people, talk when you're out and about. Don't just be like that person who doesn't want to talk to anyone or who wants to distance people. I think get out there, meet new people and don't don't have any fear in yourself. Just go for it. I, literally, I get opportunities all the time. I just say, go on then, I'll have a go. Because I just think it's so much better to like live your life with no regrets than to like carry on through your life and and like always say no to things, do you know what I mean? I just think, just enjoy your life. If it, if it speaks to your heart, go and do it. Oh my God, what an amazing panel. Thank you guys, thank you guys for coming, thank you.